Hi everyone, and welcome to the second session of Digital Dontex webinar series. This is Mahmoud al Bishti with you from Digital Dontex International Academy. It's our pleasure and honor to welcome our guest speaker, Professor Ramesh Chaudhry from Brainmark Osseo Integration Center, India. Professor Chaudhry will share with us his experience in influence of digital planning in full arch implant supported restorations. Professor Chaudhry is a chief of Brainmark Osseo Integration Center, India, also a member center of Associate Brainmark Osseo Integration Center, Sweden. He is a professor, Department of Prostodontics, and head of the Department of Research and Development in Bangalore, India. He studied dentistry at Government Dental College, Bangalore, and master's degree in prostodontics from SDM College of Dental Science, India. He did his PhD in prostodontics from Malmo University, Sweden. Professor Chaudhry is a diplomat of International College of Oral Implantologists, United States. He holds a TC White Visiting Scholar Award from the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons, Glasgow, United Kingdom. In addition, he holds four patents to his credit. He is the chief editor of the International Journal of Prostodontics and Restorative Dentistry. He uh, developed a clinical concept of full arch implant supported fixed restorations with the minimal implants, namely Simplify. He has published more than 150 papers and abstracts in midline journals. He co-authored two of e-text books and two chapters in two text books. He is adjunct professor at the Sharad Bowred Dental College, India, also a visiting researcher at Malmo University, Sweden. His research focuses primarily on enhancing osseointegration integration and simplification of implant treatment modalities. So just before uh, Professor Ramesh start his presentation, I would like to raise that the attendees can write their questions in the Q&A section. And after uh, Professor Chaudhry finish his presentation, um, he can answer all these questions. So without any delay, I'm honored once again to welcome you, um, uh, Ramesh, with us today. And um, I think it's uh, the stage is yours. So I'll let you your screen is on, so you can start. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mohammed. And it's an honor to be associated with Digital Donics. And uh, I'm very privileged, I should say, that I am having uh, giving a webinar lecture to this webinar series, which I've been following from almost now three months. And I have seen a few amazing lectures by very great speakers and it motivates us and takes it in a way which which is i feel the most essential part of today's dental practice which is a digital flow because i started my practice 20 years back so i'm still struggling to some extent to get into this field and this kind of webinar series will definitely help uh, to uh, know gain more knowledge in our speciality and uh, to start with my presentation uh, shall I, Mahmoud? Yes, please, please. Thank you so thank much. You. Uh, Th thank you so much. Yeah. So, uh, friends, uh, good morning and good afternoon and good evening to the rest of the world people. And uh, in India, it's 7.30 evening now. So, influencing the digital planning of full heart implant supported restoration uh, is the topic which I'm going to talk about. I'm basically going to talk about how I have experienced my way of practice and how it has been changed for these several years, I've been practicing dental implantology for the past 22 years now and how it has moved and what are the struggling things which I'm finding it and probably, yes, learning with the experts, I should say. To, to say, friends, complete edentialism, according to the World Health Organization criteria, edentulous patients are considered physically impaired, disabled and handicapped because of their 
inability to properly masticate and speak. And uh, we all know that there is a variability of, uh, there is an improvement in life expectancy in recent age to have, one second, I'll just minimize this. Yeah. In decades to have led the significantly increased proportion of elderly population in the, that means to say that the people above 65 years, which is called a geriatric patients, are living longer in many, many countries. So if I give to give an a, a example of my own country in 1950s and 1947, we the average human was living for 38 and now it is 74. So there is a drastic change in the uh, people living longer and the number of adults. If you can see that by 64 years or older, you're projected to be outnumbering children in the year 2034. So why this is essential, this data is essential because that means we are going to cater to many patients. There are going to be many patients who will have uh, edentialism and probably, of course, the data is varying sometimes. Sometimes it is surprising from when we see from other parts of the world, but factors associated with edentialism have a big uh, reportedly been identified to include age, socioeconomic status, and urban rural residency. Why I have included this particular reference here was friends because of the socioeconomic status plays a vital role because I have been doing a lot of survey on uh, uh, the percentage of edentialism across the world because it comes to me from very surprised that in, B, in India having more than 300 dental schools, we still cater to many edentialists complete complete edentulous patients. But when I see a literature data of the European nations and other parts of the world, it, the it percentage of edentulism is been coming down compared to few articles, which I see, I should say. If you can see here that uh, in UK, Sweden, Finland, the percentage is falling down of complete edentulous patients, which in fact, I could see in recent few of the scientific meetings like EAO, like there was very minimal amount of full arch or full mouth discussions on edentulism rehabilitations compared to partial and single implants. If you see uh, statistics of the world, Western world population of edentulous, 60% people, 64% of the edentulous patients in the Western world live in United States and in Brazil. So that's, that's a huge number, big number of edentulous patients uh, from that part of the world and coming to my part of the world to the asian nations and of course because being china and india being the highly populated at the percentage is more in this part of the area because here for us every every month we try to get many edentulous patients of course the financial constraints the social economic status won't allow many patients to get into fixed restorations but of course there are things which have been changing and when, because I feel personally that maybe because of the simplifying of the surgical protocols, extensive surgeries have been reduced now and the time duration is getting reduced, there is an acceptance, more acceptance of patients for complete edentulous patients. Because complete edentulous patients are a different scenario, friends, and so compared to a single implant and a partial edentulous patients. Because as of today, in many countries where I showed you the statistics, Still today, complete denture is the treatment modality for these kind of patients, which is traditional cross-current treatment, which was there been for many years. Even today, many, many patients in my part of the world, in my country, uh, only uh, stay with complete dentures. So it's, 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 it's a situation where we still struggle with uh, rehabilitating these kind of patients, but it is, uh, of course, the digital thing, digital scenarios are changing. And the acceptance, as I said, is more increased. So a thorough evaluation when you get a complete denture patients, I want to tell you here that what have been changed, which have been come from digital and how still we can still we rely on few of the conventional methodologies in complete edentulous patients. So first, of course, we know that medical history, chief complaints and patient expectations have been seen and we, have, we need to check on them, whether they are patients' expectations should also be discussed with them, whether they need. That's what I said, that most of the patients sometimes don't uh, really readily accept when we tell them that you need to go with reflection of the complete flap and you need to wait for, you need to have a 15 days of uh, this big swelling and discomfort because of the flap reflected and placements and things like that. So that is that is that was I should say for past these many years was the biggest concern for us 
to uh, convince the patients for rehabilitation of full mouth. And yes, intraoral, when you say that even so some, uh, there, there is to be not a clear picture when we, uh, maybe if I say 10 years back, when we get a complete edentulous patient, in, in most of the areas where we practice, I said I practice, it's that patients first start using a conventional denture, then they uh, come back to us maybe after 10, 15 years, then when the dentures are not sitting there and then and they tell us that, okay, now we need to go for uh, implants probably. Uh, but when we see, there will be no bone. But it was really difficult 15 years back, I should say, that it was to make out that what kind of a bone they have. And it used to be just an OPG or our, our, a small radio intraoral radiograph, which used to tell us that how really we need to plan. And most of the time, we, we used to wait for some surprises. We used to get some surprises when the moment we open them, because it was to be a big risk. And diagnostic aids were very limited those times. Probably we used to make a model and try to get the uh, section of the model and try to get the available bone, which was to be an older concept of things. But yes, CBCT has really brought a first digital evolution for, I should say, in the dentistry for most of the speciality practice in dentistry. Because these CBCTs have told us and explained us to uh, understand that the, the simplifying simplification of the um, planning procedures and you can explain the patients and tell them that, okay, this is going to be, you're going to have this kind of a bone is not there and you may have a problem. Probably you may have to go for some advanced surgeries. This was really difficult uh, in the past because we were not able to explain them and the patients to, to trust the, the patient to trust them. It was also difficult. But yes, there are certain sticks today also, like complete denture, uh, complete dentures, like we need uh, certain procedures when we have to get into the procedure, the final uh, thing, we need to have interspace relations to find out. And uh, of course, even today, even though we have got into much of the digital world, today we have to get into the trial procedures of the jaw relations and see amount available amount of space. Because anatomical situation is very important, patients uh, and as in my part of the world, it is an economic implications and age of the patients. Probably these are the main factors we consider to plan a full arch restoration. And few are few, few criteria are still there which have to be handled manually, which we cannot uh, uh, see through a digital scenario. Probably. Uh, a situation where a facial and lip profile, a support of the lip and whether we need to go for the lip support of the restoration or it can be a non-lip support of the restoration and the amount of intra space a patient has. These things before getting into a plan, we need to make so probably we still believe and still rely on a complete denture fabrication or a trying stage of fabrication of a denture, mm. which will give us a situation to understand the visibility, the horizontal smile, the uh, 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 amount of uh, um, like the lip support, the uh, whether it's a smile line, you say, to know that what kind of uh, aesthetics the patient can have. Yes, I have seen few things now that the facial scans have come, which can be implemented uh, and get into uh, these kind of situations. But uh, Still, for me, it's a new thing uh, and transition line to understand. Still, I believe with uh, the conventional denture trying procedures, which will tell us the how much is the visibility of the processes, where the processes can be uh, fitted and how the processes will look when the final restoration comes. And of course, it depends on the selection of your processes. They basically in a full large restoration, friends, depends upon the number of amount of resorption, which we say that if it is a mild resorption or a moderate resorption or an advanced resorption, we need to plan this. Of course, today when we, we transfer the uh, of jaw relation to a virtual articulator, these things have become simplified, but selection of a restoration still depends uh, challenge sometimes. But yes, digital workflow has been accepted and implemented in many ways because our journey, I as I said that, I, I would like to tell you about my journey about implant uh, digital flow, which, which which started, I think I should say uh, in 2012. So before I get into the way how I uh, practiced and how it has evolved, I want to give a recent review of the literature. 
about what full arch digital workflow has been stating it. So if you can see a publication published by the Jodo and all in 2017, which uh, on complete digital workflow in fixed prosthodontics. I have uh, just taken a few of the systematic reviews to tell you how people were thinking and how much of the data existing in those times. A number of RCTs tests which showed that future research with well designed removable randomized clinical trials, including follow up observations, is completely necessary in the field of complete digital processing. Because complete digital processing still it's 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 a, it's a challenge for many situations. If I if we came to the next review on 2000, like after three years, still digital protocols are increasingly influential prosthodontic treatment modalities, implant supported single unit and short span reconstructions will benefit mostly from the present digital trends. Major benefits will be reduced, producing, of course, major benefits will be reduced uh, for production cost, improvement in time, efficiency and fulfillment. But if you can see here, the concentration is more on single or short span reconstruction of implant supported reconstruction, not much on the full arch reconstruction because the full arch reconstruction of implant restor supported restoration still is not completely uh, accepted sometimes. So if you can take into 2021, the direct digital workflow a narrative review uh, by George and his group, you can see the vast majority of it concluded that the vast majority of identified studies were in vitro and in limited in clinical significance. Nevertheless, intraoral scanning exhibits high accuracy both in single and multiple restorations. Available literature on single implant monolithic restoration manufactured for a complete digital through promising results. This is one article which can tell you that there are some probability because the articles, more of them are of a in vitro situation rather than completely on a clinical trans and random and clinical studies. So it is, it is, uh, uh, so if we, when we feel with this background, if you get into a digital planning, we, we have certain amount of question marks, which can say that, okay, there are certain limitations probably. So we let, let us see what limitations it could be as of today with full mouth implant restorations. Evaluation of digital planning, of course, we started earlier just with a CBCT planning, CBCT planning, there were no guides. We, we, this is I'm talking in 2010 and 2000 thing, because in 2011, I got the DTX today, or it was called as noble clinician those times. And uh, we just used to plan with them. And um, we used to we used to be excited to know that the, the, the we were getting to know the width of the bone, the available bone and the situation of the bone in the cross-section and the profile. And of course, it, it had given us more promising results in those times itself. We can see here that the implants have been placed more parallel just by seeing a CVCT. This is not a guided procedure here, but we can say that it's a digital form of digitalization started with CVCT planning, where the navigation systems were, uh, the guided procedures were not there still, but there was, we, we were having softwares to plan about how to place an implants and what your placement of implants was possible. So you can see that the, we could give more parallel uh, implants and good spatial smile aesthetics and from visibility and good uh, long-term success also. Then came the full CBCT procedures friends, which uh, I should say uh, was a slight uh, more of a revolutionizing uh, for me, for, for my work. If you can see, this is the flow chart of that where which digitally you can, get a CBCT scanning. And of course, today we have intraoral scanning and synchronizing of both this data. But then it comes to the digital planning of the implant, implant and even the restoration. Then you can get into treatment of prosthetic restorations also, and then you can get the surgical guide and this temporary restorations. So this is today's situation. So if we can tell you, but if I have to tell you with the stepwise procedures that First, CBCT of the complete denture arch is made. The CBCT is prepared, uh, CBCT of the denture prepared is made. So first we have to make a CBCT of the patient's edentulous arches. It, this was the first procedures which were followed those times when the first initial guided surgery started coming. So it was like CBCT of the patient, then the CBCT of the dentures with, uh, uh, dot, uh, with applying the markers so that then the denture and the patients, both CBCT were together was recorded. So this data was you synchronized by applying the markers to the denture 
so that this can be transferred to the, these DICOM files can be transferred to the software. So uh, this is how the three uh, scans use DICOM files is to be required. And later on, this is one case, which I'll show you uh, with that kind of a procedure where we have planned the case and then uh, executed it. So I'll just try to show you here that this was a, a dentulous case, complete dentulous case. So in a guided process and in a navigation planning procedure, uh, you can mark the nerve. This I think most of you are knowing aware of these. And when you immediately you scan the denture, and the denture when with the three scans, it gets back with the identifies and gets back in position with the on the ridge. And you can know the position of the future restoration, which can come with this denture thing. And um, Yes, and the concept here was that the denture was very essential. The denture scan was very essential those times because your guide was built on the basis on the on the form of the denture was made. So it was very essential that you need to have a, a denture made and it, you need to scan the denture. So you, here you can see that uh, the implants are placed parallel to each other and we have this safe zones of all the implants. So of course, this is a very common procedure nowadays. Most of the dentists across the world do it. Uh, so I don't have to say about it much. And see, this is how this both this, the data has been synchronizing. You can see here that see this the, with the markers, you can make out that the denture and the um, the CBCT of the patient jaw is synchronized very well. And uh, I'll just push it a little forward to, and these are the pins which can be incorporated in the denture itself. So, so what happens is, of course, this is just one step to show that how your implants are parallel to each other. So this is, was an amazing thing because we could plan everything. We, we, we still uh, do this regularly sometimes where we can plan sync parallelism of the denture uh, implants and how they are opening up, where the opening of the implants are coming and where, uh, especially uh, based in comparison to the uh, teeth. So then the same thing can be converted. You can see here that it is getting converted to a guide. And uh, uh, this guide was used, the same guide was placed in the patient mouth and then the guided surgery was performed. So even today, many dentists follow this procedure, but of course there are certain changes now. Uh, now you don't have to sometimes uh, uh, don't have the, the, the guide is not depending on the denture design. So the software itself develops its own guide. So I'll skip with that. So this is the outcome of the uh, planning. The denture is converted into a guide, a surgical guide with the final uh, guide positions and the pins, vertical pins. And so this is uh, the procedure where the guide is placed and uh, the surgery is performed. So it's quite a simple thing. And uh, if I have to say you that there are various companies come with various kinds of uh, things, like uh, if you see the Noble Biocare, it comes with drills are of uh, longer lengths, but they don't have a, a, a offset in, in incorporated in them. So you need to use the sleeves. You need to use the sleeves to get to the dimension of the final drill. So you can see here, you can see that the sleeves have been used uh, from 2 mm thickness, then it is increased to gradually increase to the various thickness. And uh, probably that is how uh, you can go to the final drill. So the sleeve, what you have is of the final dimension. So that is how it is to be uh, for the Noble bike. And then with other systems like DO, Austin and other various systems are there, which they have their offset incorporated in the drill. So you don't have to, you don't really have to have the, the sleeves done. So the, the drills just change. So this is how, I'm just skipping up the video to show that. Um, yeah, this is now the implants have been finally seated and we are just giving a final talk to make them seat. Then, then the, yeah, this is one more implant placed. Because I, I tried this manually because uh, I was I wanted to see the stability with, to feel the stability of the implant. 
and this is how the implants are placed. Then uh, with the upper was only for four implants the guided because we had to do a sinus lift in the both posterior region, and this is how the sinus lift implants were placed later on. And this is again a digital, and then we we were till for many time of days we were just doing a manual uh, uh, impressions and. When the intraoral scanning data came up, intraoral scanners came up. So we were excited to start doing the this intraoral scanning of uh, the full arch. And I think it was, we started this three years back and uh, we did, this is one of the first cases of us where we uh, did the intraoral uh, scanning of the full arch. Of course, partial dentalism is more commonly done, but we had few challenges uh, when we did this and the models were printed. Uh, we were not able to understand why there was no synchronization and uh, the the jig what is to come or the framework what is to come was not fitting sitting well with the full arch restorations. Um, though we had to we had several repetitions of these things with good uh, scan bodies and we can see this. This is all a good uh, scan here. Yeah. So, but then later on, we, we, we started seeing some literature about it, which said that the current digital kind of techniques are reported to be accurate for specific applications. However, the scanning of edentulous arches still represents the challenge. So this was similar to, uh, uh, this was quite same with us that we were finding it very difficult to get the fold recorded easily around the, so, uh, yeah, the scan bodies and even the distance or the positions of the scan bodies were getting interchanged. Even when the printed model used to come to us, the, the positions of the hexes used to change. So this was a challenge for us uh, and still we find it difficult. But of course, now the certain uh, modifications, some alterations have done that we, we have gone, uh, we, we started doing a deep scanning with better uh, scan scanners. So the results are uh, coming good. So there are many articles to say that even in 2021, the based uh, article published uh, a systematic review, you can say that based on the results of the included studies, full large digital implant impressions taken using intraoral are not sufficiently accurate for clinical applications. Because this has been repeatedly, of course, uh, uh, ma there is one randomized clinical trial which has come recently, which still talks that there are good results of full mouth scanning uh, with other procedures, not with the intraoral, uh, with these kind of markers and intraoral scanners, though. Accuracy varies greatly with intra, intra implant distance. Scan body tie, yes. We first tried with the uh, titanium scan bodies, it was um, not really acceptable and it was very, very bad results came. Then we put it into peak uh, scan bodies and the results were good because probably because of the, uh, the light absorption of the scan scanner light so it improved and is a, it was not reflected because in the scanner there's a common thing like that whatever reflects much or shines it doesn't record well so intraoral scanner type and operating experience yes operating experience is there the efforts of scanning strategy and modifying techniques need further investigation so we have been trying to improvise it that maybe out of four cases we do one case suddenly comes up with a good results and uh, uh, then we need to go. Uh, we don't have to believe on the manual impressions. Otherwise, we in this case, we had the scan model done, printed model with the scan bodies, which was not fitting well. The jig was not sitting well. So we had to take a manual impression procedure and uh, uh, go with the, the thing. Of course, that is again a one part of the struggle what we, I, I, we, we are really still facing with full arch restoration friends to say. But the amazing thing, uh, on the laboratory side, I should say, is the digital exocat files, which have really revolutionized the way we see today the restoration, because we can really see a minutest part of the, the details with the restoration, because which was which was a challenge in the previous days, because we were for surprise when the restoration of the metal framework used to come, because now here we can see the thickness of the apartments which are going to be there. And if you are milled abutments or your custom abutments, whatever you know, we know that where the margins are sitting before it's going to go for a, a print or uh, which is going to come to you 
and uh, even the type of framework what you're doing it's already exactly before it goes for a printing so this gives you a, a very broad view to understand what kind of a restoration you are waiting to receive from the laboratory and how the results are going to be so this was uh, the same thing which we have after approval of these things so again this has become a routine across the world today exocad has really i should say really has changed the way we today see the restoration part uh, before it comes to us in the clinic the practice so and this is of course the end result of the pay to the patient the patient was very happy and uh, even the margins and the fit uh, and the self cleansing areas everything can be planned very nicely these days friends before uh, it was a difficult thing so this is again uh, um, of course this is i have told you and then come to the next kind of restoration thing digital flow this this was where the processes was sent to the laboratory and the the, the planning of the processes everything was planned and then it was uh, sent after some time of course this is a delayed kind of a loading but if you see this kind of patient where um, uh, the planning is done with the implant studio software where of course again this is again a common thing uh, nowadays you can see here i'm just trying to show yeah this is again with the markers then the markers are placed on the edentulous area this is again a different kind of way and here the virtual teeth are placed on the edentulous and because we have given an interage area to the page of, of the trine denture then the, which is been there in the data which gives the planner of its it's if the dentist or the lab person to plan the intra space which i was telling which is very important to understand what kind of restoration you are trying to give the final restoration so the prosthetics completely is planned before the surgical procedure is done so this is an amazing uh, uh, way of explaining to the patients also the patient's convincing is increase see this uh, then yeah so i'm just skipping uh, the entire because this is as the entire plan there so this is again now the planning of the implants based on the restoration part which is going to be there and uh, this is how the implants were of course these implants were six years then later on we removed it in maybe four because of the of course in my in our part of the nation we the first because of some financial constraints the patients don't agree for what the plannings of bone numbers so this is how the planning was done with the virtual teeth there yeah then the guide was printed based on the data with the virtual printing and the guide uh, was seated in situ and of course a guided procedure was done and and the guide came from the laboratory the even the temporary restoration was sent because of the uh, the it was restoratively planned uh, earlier before the surgical was planned so this is how the restoration uh, the radiograph shows about the positions of the implants placed and the temporary seated this is a temporary which came with the restoration uh, with the guide so it was just a pickup kind of a procedure where uh, we need to pick up the pro with with the temporary abutments and and this is where we are tightening the processes uh, within an hour of the restoration uh, within an hour of the surgery and so this is how the patient went back and the same thing was scanned this this temporary was removed after three months and this was scanned and with the scan body seat inside then uh, there was nothing uh, no impressions uh, to be recorded then this is how the procedure was after three months there was the intraoral was looking at and the, the final processes came from the laboratory just on the scans what we sent and uh, the patient in 15 days of the temporary was removed we got the final pro because we patient we the, the data we had already had the intra space we had the bike was there 
and uh, the amount of visibility was accepted by the patient what the temporary what gave so it was easy for uh, us to do so this is i should say has really revolutionized and changed the way today we do a full mouth restoration and the patients are more as i said it is accepting so now this is is a routine procedure we have been doing till now and uh, there's a new advancement in our practice where digital planning of advance of course this is one before that i should say uh, of bone reduction see the space there is an interest uh, less interest space and uh, if you can see with the occlusal bite of the patient phonetic stalking at i just want to increase the volume they're talking in the local language so you can see the amount of visibility the patient has a huge amount of visibility the patient had so we check that uh, manually with the jaw intra space and you planned for reduction uh, and this is a three guide uh, uh, surgical guide where we have uh, first the bone reduction guide then on that it's superimposing we have the uh, implant placement guide so this is how the uh, surgical guide for the bone cutting is being placed and then it's been bone is reduced and implants are placed of course this is again as i said that full large digital impressions don't work sometimes so we we have to depend on this and then this is what we reduced uh, the amount of intra space what was there before the patient came to uh, before the surgical procedure then we got an adequate amount of space and then we tried with the jig trial which was a teeth jig trial sometimes we try to do this before we send it for scan and uh, this is the metal trial and then the final procedure pro uh, processes in place of course now we have moved into a new era uh, or, or i should say a new life of digital thing which is again quite exciting because we don't have to now go with the guided procedures of guided surgeries and i mean to say that um, uh, how I, I should say that we don't have to use a surgical guide anymore i should say so i think i had heard about one i i listened to one of the lectures on uh, digital donic by esther my friend she spoke about the digital navigation system it's an amazing concept there are various companies which uh, do it now uh, we implemented this year in our practice which will uh, it should say that i am I'm, I'm trying to say that this is a semi robotic i should say that we have some fish here the markers or the trackers which are placed on the patient head and uh, and this is the camera uh, which records the positions and this was the plant position and you can see this is the uh, implant after placement and it was 0.6 error percentage of error even that small error can be calculated so even now it's becoming like that that these small errors are looking big for us when with the digital involvement we know that okay we have to achieve because a software doesn't understand that what is 0.6 or point or 6 mm because for us 0.6 today also is nothing because that much of but still it calculates and tells us that you are away 0.6 mm so that is the amazing feature of a digital thing uh it still makes us to think that oh we have missed out 0.6 mm of error is there so this is how it works so we, we have pro provision now that to play some good music when we are working so which makes us relaxed position so that we know a full arch also can be done easily so I conclude my presentation by saying that digital planning definitely helps in simplifying the procedures. Complete digital sequence is still a challenge in full arch implant restorations. And with the advent of advanced printers, scanners, and virtual articulators, future of digital planning and restoration will be good for sure and benefit the patients. Thank you so much for your listening and uh, over to you, uh, Mohammed. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for your interesting presentation. You uh, divided us 
um, through the history of the um, planning for the uh, implant supported uh, for rehabilitation. Um, and we, it was very clear that the advanced of the uh, treatment when the digital technologies comes on. And I will start with the last part that you uh, talked about, which is the uh, navigation. Yeah, uh, surgery aid navigations. It's very uh, amazing uh, concepts that- Absolutely. Yeah, that's what reduce the time, the cost, as we, as we have seen that, you know, you need to go even with the uh, digital or uh, professional digital ways, you still to go through different steps to achieve a good results. But with the navigation system, it's uh, it's more easier. So at the same time, you can know where's uh, your bear going, you know, uh, your, uh, your bone and everything. So you have a comprehensive uh, viewing of your environment in the intraoral and outside um, the, the oral. So do you think that um, technology can be more more advanced to us? Um, I mean, in terms of accuracy, um, you talked about um, 0 0.6 mil differences, um, but <laughs> sometimes with the uh, uh, an available space is, is is a matter, but do you think that the accuracy will be increased by time? Absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, if two decades of my practice, I'm seeing if uh, the, I should give you an example here that if I, when I, when my follow patients come from last 15 years, when I take a CBCT now, I see that I had positioned implants very wrongly sometimes, but it was not seen. And uh, we feel that if getting given in a positive now, we really uh, change it. So the, 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 the mentality of our positioning of implants and accuracy is increasing because there is somebody telling us that you are doing wrong, which was really, really not happening, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, so the digital thing is telling us, like, that's what I said that when, when the, that first, that was my, First case which I posted you with single implant molar, so it came as a red mark. So it red mark, you know that it's like like you're wrong. Yeah. But it was only point. It was just point six mm. So the first for a moment I thought, oh, I'm really point six mm away. Then when uh, when I finished the surgery, I thought, I thought, oh, it's just point six mm. <laughs> so, it some, so, so so it is it is like you are being monitored by a mentor. Yeah. This still is something that you have been monitored by a mentor, which was lacking for many time now. And so it's, yeah, it's, it, it's and, really, uh, yeah, I think the good thing that is um, immediately calculate um, uh, any differences that you go wrong direction or something is, is the feedback is very fast, which is very, uh, very important. That's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's, we, that's what, yeah. Um, actually, we got uh, a question from Dr. Abdul Majid Oksha. Um, he asked, do you recommend digital planning in simple cases too, even if it may add extra costs to the patients? Yeah, the, um, as now we are moving more uh, with an evidence-based practice across the world. So I think keeping a data with planning and showing the patients will definitely add up. Uh, to it so I, I maybe this kind of uh, mindset I had some maybe 10 years back that for simple cases are different and these cases are different but now uh, at least what I do is I at least plan it maybe I don't use a guided procedure for single in simple cases though but I still do every case CBCT planning so I it, it gives me an idea so how freehand I can go and what is my limitations. But of course, after getting an evident, it it is uh, if it, it will be very difficult to get back to those stages of freehand. Yeah, um, I have a question. Um, we know that if we decided to, to go digital, that's mean increase the cost um, uh, for the yes. uh, practitioners and. 
basically because of the equipment and the technology uh, itself. But in terms of uh, uh, patient achievements, uh, it can be done in many cases uh, within a shorter time. And, uh, you know, with the accuracy, high accuracy. So how, what do you think about the cost? How can we reduce the cost? Especially that we know that there are some open um, access uh, uh, resources for the uh, softwares and stuff like that. But again, yeah. the accuracy is still concern. So what's your opinion on that? How, how do you think about that? So it's it's something like you you it's 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 a question where you 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 have to decide whether you have to compromise on some positions or you need don't want to compromise on your success rate. So I feel this cost is a major factor. Then especially a person from for, for like me who are who are practicing in India. So it's a the price is a main factor for treatment modalities here. Exactly. So it is always a thing that yeah and so. And so it is. It's 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 always better to improvise uh, uh, on the uh, uh, accuracy. So when you need an accuracy, then you need to have uh, the financial things has to be uh, slightly taken into considerations. And that's what I see because it's a very tough thing to tell you uh, the how you need to figure out this thing. But can we leave the thing? But yes, there are a lot of, I, I have seen that there is a lot of changes which have been happening. The finance, the cost, costs are coming down on intraoral scanners and on digital planning softwares. Some softwares are free now. Maybe you can plan and give them. So, of course, many companies are coming out easier user-friendly procedures so that people can, because the even many companies know that now this is essential for that many dentists to use it. So probably they are making more provisions to uh, make the cost factor reduced in your procedures. Like now, if we have a printer at your in 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 place, so the cost of the printer comes down. Your surgical guides come down. The temporaries come down. So the cost I am seeing that the prices are coming down uh, gradually of intraoral scanners or printers or things like that from last five six years. So probably yes, it is going to be a situation where every practice is going to use them, and then when the sales are more, even any any company or any manufacturer will get down the prices. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So uh, we have another question uh, from Dr. Midola. Um, she said uh, she means an excellent lecture, Professor. So she thanking you for the lecture, and she asked, uh, "Do you um, prefer?" Um, Navident or guided surgery? Uh, I think uh, we are very new to Navident still, so uh, it's still an excitement. So, so guided surgeries, most of the times it happens that uh, we have to believe on the guide. This is what is my experience. Yeah. So like uh, you, whatever you're planned, you cannot change it. Yeah. The guide is done. So in a Navident procedure, what happens is you feel that there is a slight, you want to change the plan, you're reflected or you're not reflecting still, you feel there is going to be a change in the, you can immediately change and accommodate that in a Navident system. But um, in a guided, your guide is being done and there's no change anything. So you need to go with it. And most of the time I have seen, uh, because we run some courses also in, in plant training, so we see that the students or the young doctors say that we have to blindly believe the guide. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because we have to completely trust the guide. And yeah. uh, so so it's guides, I feel, is good when you have a good bone and uh, there's no compromise situations. But uh, uh, guides may be of a little tricky situations when you have slight bone concavities and things like that. You may have... Uh, some errors because if you have seen the literature uh, background that guided procedures are not really given an accurate perfectly accurate uh, outcome sometimes yeah yeah so uh, with that uh, i would like to thank you um dr uh, ramish for your excellent uh, presentation it was so exciting and um, very informative uh, lecture um so uh, as uh, 
as tradition for uh, digital domtics, um, uh, we present a certificate of appreciation. So we hereby uh, express our sincere appreciation to Professor Ramesh Chaudhary. In recognition of so his much. contributions as a live webinar speaker for the digital digital, digital domtics webinar series on the topic of influence of digital uh, planning in full arch implant uh, supported restorations that was presented on Tuesday, December 13th, 2022. So Dr. Ramesh, I'm so, so glad to having you with me. Uh, you reached our knowledge and uh, the uh, digital domtics uh, uh, members with the those information. So thank you so much for your time and effort. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.